What are the duties that pave the road towards hastening the reappearance of the awaited Messiah? Is acknowledging his right a duty? If so, what have we done regarding this matter? Is the virtue of awaiting evident from the traditions of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and the verses from the Noble Qur'an? Is the separation process from the awaited Imam a pleasant situation? Or should the believers who await his arrival weep for his separation? What are the duties that hasten the process of occultation? And what are the actions that delay such an appearance? Is the reappearance of such an individual beneficial for humanity? If so, what have we done regarding his reappearance? Similar questions will be answered in tonight's program regarding the duties of the believers during the occultation of the awaited Imam as my dear guest and I will provide traditions and verses from the Holy Quran regarding this matter. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the fifth episode of the awaited apostle. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome once again to the fifth episode of The Awaited Apostle with me, your host Ahmad Ali. In the previous episode, we talked about the global justice which will be established by the awaited Messiah with my dear guest, Sayyid Mudaffar Al Qazwini, who has joined me in tonight's episode as well. So let's welcome him. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I would like to congratulate you. Uh, as Allah well as you see. respected viewers on this auspicious occasion Allah the birth uh, of our awaited messiah awaited 12th imam imam al-mahdi may Allah hasten his reappearance and uh, as we can see mashallah karbala is packed uh, with pilgrims who have come here to pledge their allegiance to imam al-hussein and, and his brother abu al-fadl abbas uh, on this blessed occasion so alhamdulillah rabbil alameen we are uh, on a night like this, in a land like this, in, in Karbala. Uh, Sayyidina, today's topic is, is very crucial and, and very important when it comes to hastening the Imam's reappearance. Uh, I would like to begin tonight's episode by a narration by Imam Baqir, if you will. Uh, he says, when the awaited Imam reappears, he will say to all nations, regardless of their sect, religion, faith, whatever they may be. He says, God commands you not to associate partners with him and to be obedient to him and his prophets. Revive that which has been enjoined by the Quran to revive and abandon that which has been urged by the Quran to be abandoned. Be the person of the path of guidance and have piety and virtue because the annihilation and doom of the world has come and the trumpet of farewell has already been blown. So Imam Mahdi, this is when he appears, but we want to get to him before he appears. What does this mean and what are the duties to hastening his reappearance? Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. To make it more simple, uh, as we mentioned that there has to be a global change. Yes. It's not only based on the Muslims. So uh, I will mention a few uh, verses that uh, could be duties of mankind, what mankind must do mm -hmm. uh, to hasten the reappearance of this Messiah, the upcoming of this Messiah, and then what are the duties of us Shia Muslims uh, in the time of uh, occultation and ghaybah of the Imam yes. and what we must do to uh, hasten the reappearance of the Imam and his uh, coming inshallah. Mm -hmm. inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهِ mm -hmm. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهِ Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator and Lord, is not speaking of, uh, of believers. He's not speaking of Muslims. He's saying whomever yes. does 
whomever does an atom's weight of good, he shall see it. And whomever does an atom, atom's weight of evil, he shall also witness it. So we today as human beings uh, and mankind, the evil uh, that we see around the world today, this is just the accu accumulation of our actions. Uh, if we want to see uh, goodness and justice and purification, then our actions should be uh, making those differences. Definitely. You know, as, 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 as a global community, not just within the Muslims or, you know, within the Shias. If human beings, if uh, mankind wants to see goodness, then uh, according to the words of God, one should act upon that goodness. And even, you know, a, a, a small amount of goodness, the size of an atom, wow. an atom's weight, he so will small. witness it. So if we globally, mankind, we start producing goodness, mm -hmm. then we will see much more uh, goodness around the world. We mm -hmm. won't see as much de uh, devastation, anni annihilation, death, poverty. Mm -hmm. But the problem is today that uh, the world is presenting more evil than it is presenting goodness. Mm -hmm. But just to mention something regarding that verse, is that it's not just mentioned in the Holy Quran. Uh, I can't remember which verse it is in the, in, the, in the Bible, which also mentions the exact same if the, the, the phrase or the words are yes, uh, uh, you know, different. Uh, these things, uh, you know, verses so like it's, these it's will, would Muslims. be similar in the Quran, in the Bible, or in the Torah, because these are principles that yes. God, uh, you know, revealed upon His prophets and messengers. Yes. These are... Uh, ways and examples that every single human needs to live life. by yes. you know when you do evil you will see evil and when you do good you will see good definitely so as for mankind it's our duty to start presenting more goodness to our communities definitely. to our countries definitely. to 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 mankind uh, in in general so uh you know, it, it doesn't start off by uh, a certain group or uh, a certain country. It needs to start, you know, individually. Every single human being needs to start presenting goodness mm -hmm. to this world so uh, we can uh, witness uh, the upcoming of a Savior when he sees that, uh, you know, we are ready. Mm -hmm. And you know when when you do something good good results will come definitely and the best of results of our actions is the representative of god and that's logic uh, the representative of of our creator living yes. amongst us and ending uh, injustice and oppression mm -hmm. and that's logic it's not something uh based on a religion or faith no it's a god-given yeah. equation mm -hmm. it's it's a uh, uh, you know, whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God. When you do something good. You know, uh, you believe in karma at least. Yes. So, you know, what goes around comes, comes around. around. Yes. So in this world, if, if we as human beings, if we're spreading evil, then this is all we have uh, we'll come back ar around, us. Uh, uh, around us. You know, whether it's, it's, uh, it's on a big scale, whether countries or governments are doing and spreading evil, or whether it's uh, groups, within a family, uh, you know, or families, or, or or so on and so forth, you know, you fund you fund terrorism, yes. terrorism will come back to you. You you support terrorism, and that's what we see and, today. And this is what we see today, you know, uh, for so long, you know, uh, terrorists were placed in, in in Muslim countries. They were funded. They were trained, and. Uh, uh, this is general knowledge. It's not knowledge that, you know, it's a secret or hidden from people. Uh, the Taliban w was, was trained by America wow. to, to end the Soviet Union. But now look at, uh, what, you know, how far done. this evil has come to destroy, you know, half of the planet. You know, now today, peop thousands, millions of people became refugees. 
uh, millions of, 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 of women became widows, millions of, of children became orphans. Just let alone in Iraq, there's about five to six million orphans and widows. Wow. And these numbers are you know, increasing. increasing drastically. And same thing with Syria, same thing with Afghanistan, same thing with Yemen, same thing with Libya, same thing. All in these countries, country. they're, wow. you know, uh, they're being destroyed. Yes. So, uh, you know, you could only imagine that the evil that you started will return back to haunt you. Definitely. And same with, with the tyrants of our time or the people or, or, or the rulers that have ruled b b before them. If we want to look at just less than 10 years ago, one of the biggest tyrants of, 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 of our century was Saddam Hussein. And look what happened to him. He spread so much evil that it came back to him. And, and at the end, they, they hung him. They, yeah, same he was thing killed. with Gaddafi, yeah. same thing. They with thought that they were going to live so long, yet. Same thing with Gaddafi, yeah. Amal Gaddafi. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, we have to realize that it's not just within the Muslims. Yes. You don't believe in, uh, in a God, you don't believe in, in a religion, but you should believe in karma. Yes. You should believe that evil will bring back evil to this world mm -hmm. and goodness will bring uh, goodness to this world. If mm -hmm. you want, you know, uh, good for your country and your countrymen, whether you're in Canada, uh, America, Europe, wherever you are, and you want goodness for your people, yes. you shouldn't spread evil in other countries. Definitely because that evil will come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly why we saw, you know, uh, uh, terrorist attacks in Europe this mm -hmm. uh, last year or yes. within this year. And just like uh, people in Iraq and in our countries are losing their lives, you know, innocent people are losing their lives. Same thing will start happening to you. So you need to realize and the world needs to realize that uh, once you spread evil, it will come back. It will come back to you. فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره. This is, you know, a God-given equation. Mm -hmm. You you do an atom ways of, of of goodness, you will see its the goodness, reward. and you do an atom ways of evil, you will also witness it. And as of mankind, if they start to produce goodness then we'll see goodness all around the world Definitely. global globally things will change but for now unfortunately what's taken over this people globe are, mm -hmm. is is evil and you know people are are, evil. are doing evil spreading evil thus we are in such mishap and uh, uh, you know bad fortune mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate to see that uh, yesterday we talked about justice and it's 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 very sad to see that the majority of the you know of, of the population general population are inclining towards injustice and and, and oppression yes. which is the worst thing to do but now that we've known and we've realized that doing good is a duty of hastening the imam's reappearance because we have to spiritually enhance ourselves and that's one of the big duties that we need to do and which is uh, a very a uh, good thing to do during his um, uh, occultation but this is the general message for mankind yes you know this is this is something that Muslims should partake in Christians Jews Hindus Buddhists mm -hmm. we all believe in the act of goodness mm -hmm. but why is it that today you know we're filling up this world with evil mm -hmm. we need to go back to our beliefs we need to go back to our innate and nature of doing goodness to expect goodness in return. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to mention something that uh, a great scholar once said. Uh, he said one of the best duties to do in the, uh, during the occultation, the ghaybah of the Imam, is to renew the oath at the hands of the Imam every day or every Friday. And that's one of the best duties that you can do. Uh, he says one of the duties during the ghaybah, the occultation of the Imam, is to renew the oath with the Imam. This can accomplish. This can be accomplished after every obligatory prayer, or on Friday when you recite Dua Al Ahad, the, the 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 supplication of allegiance. Ahad is when you pledge your allegiance towards the Imam, and in that supplication, 
there are so many examples and so many duties that we need to partake and you know illustrate in our daily lives yes so how is this another duty you know uh, before it comes to just praying for you know the reappearance of, of the imam we need to understand that there are you know certain obligations that we need to do as muslims mm -hmm. muslims tend to forget that you know their daily prayers are more important than uh, you know just reciting the dua of the return of the imam mm -hmm. the imam only will return when we fulfill our duties and our obligations yes. Uh, the hadith by the Imam himself, these are direct words from the 12th Imam. Mm -hmm. The Imam, peace be upon him, says, لو أن أشياعنا وفقهم الله لطاعته على اجتماع من القلوب في الوفاء بالعهد عليهم لما تأخر عنهم اليوم بلقائنا ولا تد وَلَتَعَجَّلَتْ لَهُمُ السَّعَادَةِ بِمُشَاهَدَتِنَا The Imam, peace be upon him, our 12th Imam, the awaited Imam, mm -hmm. he says, if our Shias, if our devotees, may Allah give them success in obeying him. You know, first thing is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if we as Muslims are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. we have not uh, completed the first task of the Imam reappearing. You know, uh, I remember I was in uh, UK about two years ago, and a lot of the youth would tell me that, you know, on the, uh, at the time of, of the majlis that, talk about prayers talk about prayers and uh, it came to me that many youth in the West many youth in, in, in the United Kingdom don't pray you know I uh, there's something uh, I noticed that when they drink water they'll sit down and drink water this is something mustahab which is uh, which is something recommended, recommended. Huh. but they have let uh, their their duties they have forgotten their obligations the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The obeying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have left it. He doesn't pray, but he comes and does matam. He doesn't pray, but he sits and drinks water. This, does have, this has no significance in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the eyes of the imams. If we want uh, to change, if we want goodness, then the imam says, the first thing that you need to do is to come together mm -hmm. on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hopefully, that, uh, j just to make something clear, uh, you know, we've mentioned something very sensitive right here. Uh, what, what I've perceived from what you're saying is that, you know, going to matam, going to a majlis, going to a gathering, a religious gathering doesn't mean that if you don't pray, don't go here. No, this no, might get you closer mean, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It could be, but without it, it means nothing as well. Yes. Without it, it means nothing as well. The hadith says, if the prayer is accepted, everything else is accepted. And if the prayers of a Muslim or a human being are denied, all his other actions are denied as well. Mm -hmm. We as Muslims, we can't lose this fundamental act in our daily lives, which is our five daily prayers. Imam Hussein والسلام, gave his life for the sake of prayer. We've heard this so many times in so many different occasions, year after year, speaker after speaker, but it goes in through one ear and it goes out through the other. Yes. When this is, you know, the most important thing when it comes to re-hastening or hastening the appearance of the Imam. The Imam says, if our devotees, may Allah give them success in obeying Him, hearts are gathered on meeting their obligations. First, first is what we mentioned yesterday, their hearts coming together. So we uh, stop this hypocrisy between us, between us Shias, we stop the hypocrisy and our hearts come together. And, you know, we, we understand that uh, we need to come together in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
There is nothing better than the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And us, uh, you know, breaking each other and destroying each other is nothing but disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Imam here is asking us Shias to come together, come together in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meet the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it's the month of Ramadan, all Muslim youth should be fasting. All Hopefully Muslim youth should be fasting when it comes to salah. All Muslim youth should be praying when it comes to hijab. All Muslim sisters should be wearing their hijab. Properly. Uh, you know, uh, let's come together on, uh, you know, conducting the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has placed upon us. Then mm -hmm. the Imam says, their good fortune of meeting us would not have been delayed. The reason the Imam's appearance is being delayed is why? We have left the goodness. We have left the goodness as we have mentioned as for mankind and for us especially as Muslims we have left our obligations and we have scattered. We have not come together by the, with love in, in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have left every single thing that we need to do, every single ingredient that we need to do in our life for uh, bringing the Imam and uh, preparing and welcoming his return. And this is our reality. You know, we don't need to be shy of our reality. Yeah, so uh, the truth, the oh. truth sometimes is, uh, is bitter. bitter, but uh, you know, many people will agree upon this that we Shias, we need to you know come together. We need to have peace and harmony within our own communities, and we need to start obeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Unfortunately, now Muslims are uh, obeying more of their desires yes. and more of the, you know their uh, country's traditions and 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 and, and uh, you know uh, social uh, they've become social experience mm -hmm. and that's actually unfortunate to see because uh, worldly desires uh, is a very harsh trap if someone falls into it because uh, when someone falls deep into the world it's very hard to get back up uh, but hopefully you know we don't fall into that trap but we'll continue the discussion after a short break Sayyidina if you will uh, so respected viewers uh, stay tuned after the break because uh, what we are going to mention after the break is very significant regarding the hastening of the Imam's reappearance that's after the break so stay tuned <laughs> صفا میاره با درخشش ماه و ستاره عبر آشقی داره میباره آره داره میباره نم نم و آروم و بی صدا میونه کوچه ها میزنه باز بارون به شیشه نم نم و آروم و بی صدا میونه کوچه ها میزنه باز بارون به شیشه هر نفس زیر این آسمون زمین زمان آبار شد ملک بلک بیچار شد همه درمه نزار شد که آلمی به شور و شیمه شب تدلد حسینه که آلمی به شور و شیمه شب تدلد نقش سینه پیرو جوونه 
تپش دلم داره میخونه داره داره میخونه عمریه بوی نسیم تو سوی حریم تو میبره قلب عاشقا رو عمریه بوی نسیم تو سوی حریم تو میبره قلب عاشقا تو نازنین من قابل بدون آقای مهربون ببینم ایونه تلا تو Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you, inshallah, enjoyed that short report. Uh, welcome to ba welcome back to the land of Karbala. We are in Karbala, in the Holy Shrine of Imam Al Hussein and his brother Abdul Fadl Abbas. And mashallah, the pilgrims are flocking towards the Holy Shrines in Karbala. Uh, but before we went to uh, into the break, we talked about disobeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that why and that is what delays. Uh, the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi, may Allah his reappearance. But back to the discussion with my dear guest, Sayyid Mudaffar. Welcome back, how are you, Sayyidna? Hello, Sayyid. Allah uh, Sayyidna, before the break, we talked about disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, how that is a downfall. Are there any other examples of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's what, you know, is. is the reason behind our downfall and it's unfortunate to see that yes the hadith by uh, Imam al-Baqir alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salam mm -hmm. says la tadhhab bikum al-madhahib fa wallah ma shi'atuna illa man ata'a Allah azza wa jal that don't be fooled by these groups uh, and sects that tell you you know uh, this is the only way of Ahlul Bayt. You know, uh, I remember in another encounter of mine when I was in the in, in UK. There were a group. Uh, there was a there was a, a group of uh, uh, people. They you know they usually call themselves Malays. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, <coughs> uh, when I was there, they told me many of them, you know, uh, they're after drug deals, they're after, you know, doing drugs, and so on and so forth. And anyone that opposes them, he becomes an imposter. You know, he, he's not a Shia. He's not a believer. He's not a lover of Ahlul Bayt. The hadith of Imam al-Baqir says the only Shia, the only Shias are those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you can't be obedient to, to, to your society and its fame and its pleasures and expect to be labeled as a Shia. You know, even this name is, is not used correctly because, yes. uh, you know, for them in their language means uh, obedient servant and if you are an obedient servant of Ahlul Bayt then uh, you know you do not partake in, in, in such akhlaq and characteristics uh, many of them don't pray many of them uh, you know don't care much about religion mm -hmm. uh, many, some of them drink some of them do drugs and unfortunately, this is, this is the wrong idea of what a Shia is. The wrong idea of what uh, you know, a lover of Ahlul Bayt is. The wrong idea of a person who is awaiting his, his sweetheart and his Imam, the uh, Imam of his time. Imam al-Baqir alayhi wa salatu wa salam says, لا تذهب بكم المذاهب You know, your Agha Khani, uh, there is no prayers, no fasting, no obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just the name and the remembrance of Ahlul Bayt would not uh, do you any good. Because Imam al Baqir alayhi wa salatu wa salam of Ahlul Bayt says, the only person who is from our Shia the one is the one who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Today, 
uh, it's become that you know we obey you know our work environments more than we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's unfortunate so many different uh, cases where I've seen our sisters take off their hijab because she went to medical school you know she's uh, had her hijab on all her life now she's gone into medical school she feels like she won't be accepted with her hijab so she takes off her hijab as if it's nothing or uh, you know uh, trying to get a work promotion or 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 something like that and they think that disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get them uh, you know benefits in this world wow. so uh, this is unfortunate that we please the working environment or our careers more than we are concerned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes it's pleasing of a spouse or you know uh, 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 the male or female in your life I've seen uh, sometimes where you know there are good uh, good boys but uh, you know the the girl that they are with pulls them to, to the wrong ends you know and when you ask him, you know, why did you get into this life? You know, his emotions probably played over him, but I'll tell you, she likes to party. You know, she likes to go, go clubbing. She likes to go, and he enters that, you know, life because of this girl. Just to please this girl, he gets into this life. Or the opposite, because she wants to please this boy, she's willing to do, you know, the stupidest things yeah. to please him, but she's willing to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we're concerned of what, what more society wants and desires from us, you know, of how, what, what uh, you know, styles we need to wear, what clothing yes. we need to wear, what tattoos what we need to have. If we have ink on our arms or, or, or our bodies or, or we don't, but how much are we, you know, uh, concerned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasures? Definitely. When the Imam says the only thing that is, uh, you know, delaying my reappearance and the fact that you could see me is your obedience. Mm -hmm. To add upon that point, one time uh, a sister came to, uh, to the cleric or the sheikh of, uh, uh, an area in Canada and she told them that whenever I go out my husband forces me to take off the hijab yeah so and many times I've seen this uh, in, in America it's, it's, it's as well we had a, a Lebanese family and uh, you know the wife became started uh, you know becoming religious and uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, her and her daughter wore hijab he threw the daughter out of the house uh, the daughter, you know, at the time, you know, she coped with it. She she found it elsewhere. But the wife, he told her, I'll divorce you tomorrow. You know, when you come in, in, in my gatherings, in front of my friends, in front of my family, you take off your hijab. I don't want you wearing that silly rag on your head. Wow. Who's he trying to please, you know? You, you're showing your wife off to, to others, trying to please who? Please them uh, at the... Uh and disobeying Allah wow. subhanahu wa ta'ala you know sometimes uh, just to please uh, you know a schoolmate or a classmate you'll eat haram food you know you don't care about the food that goes into your stomach you think it's funny sometimes but you know it's it's very sad that uh, you know we succumb and break down to a point that we can't control our stomachs mm -hmm. and we eat haram what also falls under that category is peer pressure of course something that you know but that's a, a whole different topic we'll it have is. to talk about yeah. that in, in another day an absolute uh, you know uh, different topic but yes all these do fall into under peer pressure but peer pressure is what pleasing the person who's pressuring you mm -hmm. you're not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. this is this is and that's you know, what the, the, the fact of disobedience is I said, but uh, you know the 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 what peer pressure is, and uh, we'll talk about that inshallah, maybe on another show or mm -hmm. a different uh, time. 
But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. and what the Imam is asking for us is to please him only. Yes. You know, peer pressure, yes. If you put it, if you give it to peer pressure, you're no longer pleasuring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that in America and in the West, they, you know, a lot of uh, kids would get through middle school, high school, you know, their senior year, then that's when they want to start pleasuring, like I said, co-workers, you know, uh, classmates, uh, schoolmates, friends, and they forget the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They start drinking, and this is a huge problem in our communities yes, as yes, well. It is. It is. And that's Where, you know, I, 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 know, I know people that, you know, pray Salat al-Eid on the day, day, of, day of Eid after Ramadan, and the next mm -hmm. day they're in Vegas, they're you know, uh, thir thir 30 days he's fasting, the day of Eid he's, he's you know, intoxicated. Wow. So, you Way know, celebration. <laughs> you have to know whom you're pleasing. Yes. And your pleasure is what it will bring. Yes. You know, if we want the Imams for 1200 years now, Shias have been saying, why isn't the Imam reappearing? Why isn't the Imam reappearing? And they look for a reason you know, why they, he's not they, reappearing. They, 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 they just question and ask what his existence, his, uh, you know, whether he's alive or not alive. Mm -hmm. Have you done what you need to do on your part to see if it will be fulfilled? Wow. The Imam says, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see me. As I mentioned in the hadith, uh, when uh, the Imam says, and their joy of seeing us would have been expedited. The hadith that I mentioned in the beginning yes. of the episode. That they would see us. I would return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow me to return and to establish my government. But we need to uh, leave the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, uh, actually be true Shias. Yes. Because a true Shia has certain characteristics. Definitely. The first of them is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith by Imam al-Baqir alayhi afdala salatu wa salam says, An Abi Ja'far alayhi salam qala li ya Jabir, ayaktafi man yantahil al-tashayyu' an yaqul bihubbuna ahl al-bayt فَوَاللَّهُ مَا شِيَعَتُنَا إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّقَ اللَّهُ وَأَطَاعَهُ He's telling Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari that, O oh Jabir, whomever says he's a Shia and does not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a liar. He's not, he's, 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 he's and you virtuous. know, you need to be a pious man and, 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 and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of our Shias. And Imam al-Baqir is swearing in this hadith. وَمَا كَانُوا يُعْرَفُونَ يَا جَابِرْ إِلَّا بِالتَّوَاضُعِ oh, You have to be humble. You know, if you want to be considered as a Shia, you have to be humble. إِلَّا بِالتَّوَاضُعِ وَالتَّخَشُّعِ وَالْأَمَانَةِ وَكِثْرَةِ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَالصَّوْمِ وَالصَّلَاةِ You have to be, you know, trustworthy. How many of our Muslims today are trustworthy? I had a friend of ours, in the UK, I know both parties, both parties, one of them, uh, you know, I, I, I know him as an acquaintance, and the other one is also a very close friend of mine. Uh, one of them is a lawyer, one of them is, a, is an entrepreneur. And, you know, uh, both of them are respected in the community. This lawyer calls up the, the, uh, the entrepreneur one day in the middle of the night. He tells him, I need uh, 150,000, 200,000 uh, pounds tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm losing my family. So, you know, this guy becomes gullible, feels sorry for him and gives him the money. It's been over a year where he doesn't, you know, answer his phone calls. His family doesn't answer the phone calls. Uh, he, 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 he misses every court appearance, makes so many excuses and lies just to not give back what belongs back, back to this person. Wow. He gave it to you as a sign of trust. If you're not trustworthy, this is not a sign of, of you being a Shia. You know? And this is something we have occurring so many 
uh, so many times in our communities when a person you know is not trustworthy with money he'll steal and rob others and take advantage of his believing brothers and sisters those who are new to the religion sometimes we have this as well where you know they'll come and tell these reverts you know give we need you know we, if you want if you love ahl bayt give give us eighty thousand dollars right now a hundred thousand you know pounds and we'll give it back to you in a month this person is you know pure and he's believing that uh, these people won't backstab him but what ends up happening is is they lie and deceive and they backstab these uh, you know uh, innocent people hopefully such individuals cease to exist uh, when the imam reappears you know so these are not the characteristics of a Shia Definitely. and a person who is awaiting the Imam Definitely. and uh, the Imam says and emphasizes on Sawm wa Salah prayers and fasting prayers and fasting if, 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 if you're a Shia and, and, and you're in your middle age and you're still not praying this is a big problem Very if you, uh, you know if you're coming, I know of a person who came to Karbala, he stayed here for seven days, he didn't make ziyarah. What's the reason of coming? You know, the reason is, is because he came to please people, but he did not come here to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his imam. So, so we need to, you know, check ourselves, you know. You need to check yourself once in a while. Who am I pleasing? Who am I trying to be? Am I a true Shia? Am I a person that wants to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm -hmm. uh, am I a person who, who, who is helping uh, to, to hasten the appearance of, 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 of the Imam, reappearance? And the Imam, Imam al Baqir continues to respect your parents. You know, don't treat your parents as, as, as you see like Americans treat them. Or, you know, th those who are, who are not Muslims or not Shias. Uh, we have guidelines, we have restrictions, we have uh, ways of life as, mm -hmm. as Muslims. You don't know, speak to your father and mother as if, you know, you know they're younger than you or they're, they're your best friends. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you don't joke around with them. Even if you do... Uh, uh, it has to be respectful. Barr al walidain, wal taahud al jiran, and be good to your neighbors. Min al fuqara wa ahl al maskana wal gharimin wal aytam. Be good to the orphans. Be good to your your neighbors. You know, if we carry th these characteristics, if we as Shias, we 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 live such a life then the reappearance of the Imam would be very near. Cool. You know, it's, it's not very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being a true Shia of the Imam. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's, 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 it's not about uh, uh, screaming on the 10th of Muharram or, you know, screaming on the day of Aza only, but forgetting absolutely, basis, absolutely yeah. why the Imams came for. Definitely, definitely. But another uh, thing that I would like to mention to add upon uh, the narrations or uh, the speech you just gave is the significance of Zayd al Hussein I know we've jumped a lot, but when one of the obligatory duties upon the Shia during the occultation of the Imam is the visitation of the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein Imam al-Sadiq once said, if you see the world filled with corruption and there is no solution to end oppression, then visit the holy shrine of my grandfather, Imam Al Hussein, on the 15th of Sha'ban and supplicate to Allah to hasten the, re the reappearance of the master of time. This is, you know, approximately over 100 years before Imam Mahdi was, was born. Imam Al Sadiq gives us the solution to end every single act of oppression and justice corruption by visiting the Holy Shrine of Hussein on the 15th of Sha'ban. So that's one of the, nece the necessities that Shia should do and should perform as a duty upon them to hasten the Imam's reappearance, don't yes. you think? Well, first of all, the ziyarah of the Imams in general 
is, is a duty that we need to abide and go by as, as Shia believers. You know, just like you have duties towards your parents and there are things that you need to do to your parents as a Muslim, there are things that you need to do for your Imam as an obligation mm -hmm. and that is their ziyara. You know, uh, so if you see uh, in hadiths, if you see yourself as a Shia, then uh, you have to abide by coming and visiting the, the Imams one by one and paying allegiance to them in this life. Mm -hmm. But as for the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi abdul salatu wassalam, when it comes to uh, you know, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the highest forms of obedience. And the hadith by uh, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi afdal salati wassalam. The one who seeks to shake the hands of 124,000 prophets and messengers yes. shall visit Hussein on the, in, in, in the city of Karbala on the night of or the day of mid Shaban. Brothers and sisters, the reward in, in, in the visitation of, of Imam Hussein is something uh, beyond imagination. Yeah. Uh, the other hadith by Imam al Baqir, uh, uh, Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam, says that if people knew what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for them as uh, you know, uh, 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 a reward of their obedience for visiting Imam Hussein on the day of mid Sha'ban then they would w await this day a whole year. They would just sit and wait a whole year for this day to come for them to visit Imam Hussein alayhi afdala salatu yes. again. The hadith says, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلْ أَوَّلَ يَوْمٍ مِنْ شَعْبَانٍ نَادَى مُنَادٍ مِنْ تَحْتِ الْعَرْشِ يَا وَفْدَ الْحُسَيْنِ لَا تَخْلُوا لَيْلَةً نُصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانٍ مِنْ زِيَارَةِ الْحُسَيْنِ عَلَيْهِ السلام. Wow. فَلَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِيهَا لَطَالَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ السَّنَةَ حَتَّى يُجِيءُ النَّصْفِ The angels start to, to call upon mankind, upon believers. O oh believers, O oh the sons of Adam, don't miss the day of, 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 of mid Shaban and do not miss the ziyarah of Imam Hussein. So the only thing that we could do here now is pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those who wish to come to Karbala, Definitely. but you know, they were not fortunate to be here. Definitely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them the ziyarah and visitation of Imam Hussein very soon. Inshallah. And inshallah, Allah writes them of the pilgrims of Imam Hussein next Sha'ban and uh, upcoming uh, uh, ziyarahs of Imam Hussein. Uh, and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, you know, our deeds and uh, to guide us towards uh, his uh, obedience uh, you know, uh, on a personal level on, uh, uh, based on our communities, our organizations, uh, our whole ummah in general for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our youth, to guide Inshallah. our elderly and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned, the hadith says, just through the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we come together in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the Imam, uh, our lives uh, and souls be ransomed to him, will uh, you reappear, know, reappear and uh, God and Allah, uh, Allah's government of justice will be established. Insha'Allah, insha'Allah. Insha Thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us over the past few episodes. We have come to the end of the program, uh, and it is the mid of Sha'ban. Uh, Sayyidina, I would like to mention this supplication uh, to add upon what you just said. O oh Allah, O oh the Lord of Hussein, heal the, peel, uh, heal the pain of Hussein through the reappearance of the Master. Yeah, yeah of our time. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam al-Mahdi. And it is a pleasure to be in the land of Karbala. And it's a huge fortune to be here. So thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us over the Allah past few uh, five nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you on the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Respected viewers, thank you very much for tuning in 
for the past few episodes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the people who await and obey, and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Al-Mahdi. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Allah khaliyakum inshaAllah.